everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And right here I have some leftover Rit dye in dark brown that I used to dye a t-shirt for Ryder's Halloween costume. Uh, I started with a quarter cup of Rit dye in however full this is. <laughs> there is a cup of salt in here though. Okay, I wanna dye some yarn in this. So let's use one, two, three, I've got four tablespoons of white vinegar so far. That's not a lot of acid. I'd say we probably have around 24 cups of water, but I don't like to leave dye behind. And so I'm coming in with 200 grams of Stroll fingering weight yarn. Uh, this yarn is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. And we are slowly dip dyeing it with raising and lowering the yarn. The yarn is completely dry. Uh, I have no idea if the amount of dye in here will exhaust. It seems like we have a fair amount of dye. I also don't know if this dye will bleed a lot because the amount that we have in here. But hopefully, I feel like a tablespoon was reasonable once upon a time, but the depth of color we're seeing in here has me a little nervous. Now things are getting lighter as we go through the top. So maybe, maybe we'll end up with some variation in color in here versus it all turning really, really dark. But I don't know because it doesn't look like our dye bath is really clearing. So we're giving this a shot and we'll see where we end up <laughs> and what we end up with. Uh, so, I mean, we certainly have, it is certainly lighter over there. I guess I'm gonna heat things for 30 minutes. Maybe I wanna add some more acid. I don't feel like measuring, so I'm just gonna do a nice healthy pour of acid in here. Clearly the color was striking to the yarn because the color got lighter and lighter. So yeah, I, I have a feeling, I mean the instructions say to use a cup of vinegar, but it doesn't talk about the volume. Uh, I've It's been a while since I've dyed yarn with Rit, but I'm feeling a little optimistic because we have this lighter color here. But anyway, we will wait 30 minutes and then we'll come back. It's been 30 minutes. And the battery on my camera may die, so keeping an eye on that. But I think we have a bit of a gradient of color. Certainly it gets sort of warmer and a little bit more yellow towards the top. It's really pretty. All right. Ooh, it looks like the majority of the color has bound to the yarn. There's some reds left. We could add more acid and let the yarn cool off in the pan, but I don't want to. <laughs> I think that we've got pretty yarn here and I don't want to push my luck. So I'm going to set this aside so it can cool off completely and then we'll go ahead and wash it. And so we were able to reuse pigment from the dye bath that I had set up to dye a t-shirt, which is really, really handy. And so it goes to show that you may want to have a lot of dye in your dye bath to dye a shirt evenly or get the pigmentation you want, but there will be leftover dye and you can use that for something else if you choose. Let's wash our brown dip dyed yarn. And okay, we're gonna have some bleeding. I see some that happened immediately. Whenever you end up with color leftover in the dye bath, it's safe to assume there'll be at least a little bit of bleeding. Um, if you consider that some of that colored liquid may have remained in the yarn. Now, the worst bleeding I have ever had with any yarn ever was with Brit Dye More Synthetic, which was not the dye we used. I don't think I showed it before. This is the dye that we used today. All right, let's add a little bit of some dish soap and let's fill up the basin. I'm very glad that we have a difference in the intensity of our colors. Mainly because there could have been so much dye present that we might not have been able, there could have been so much dye present that 
uh, it would have just all ended up looking dark. But in my experience, Rick can strike the yarn pretty quickly. I don't know if I've ever had a Rit mixture break in which case we see the color separating into different hues. I mean, it's almost like a little bit of the, this here because this feels more yellow, this feels more red, but it's so subtle, it's hard to say definitively. <laughs> I'm gonna add a little more soap. Doesn't hurt. the timing of when this video will come out relative to Halloween, but I will try to insert some photos of the t-shirt we dyed for Ryder. Uh, basically, we're making him into a Minecraft dirt block, and there were no brown t-shirts anywhere. Uh, when we were at Michael's, I went and checked Primary, which is where I often buy plain t-shirts for costumes, and they didn't have any either. So I went and we got that bottle of Rit. And we got a large, like a shirt that's gonna be way too big for him. It's like a white t-shirt. Even though we have white t-shirts at home, I wanted one that I knew would be huge on him. And we scrunched it up to dye. And the good news is our water is looking really, really clear now. Uh, I'm currently washing the t-shirt multiple times in my washing machine. I like to do that. And then this will dry it and then I have to paint it. But I'll try to take a picture of it before we start painting the tops of it. But anyway, I'm hoping to teach Ryder to knit on a knitting loom today. And so that would be awesome. But anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna go put this through my spin dryer and then hang it up to dry and we'll come back and look at the finished color Which is a lovely brown Rit dyes are a lot of fun But I think the thing I love about them the most is that they're already in liquid form. There's nothing to dissolve Now who knows if older bottles of the dye if the dye settles or what so there's elements there that are less known but we achieved a stunning brown, and I will say, this brown does not feel purple. It does not feel orange. Like, granted, there are some warm notes as we get through this lighter end and even a little breaking, maybe some yellow up towards the end. But overall, I would say this is a lovely, true brown. One thing I find funny about dip dyed yarn sometimes is it really looks like I have a spotlight over here, which I don't. It's just we have a darker end and a lighter end. It's just sometimes with something monochromatic, but with different depths of color, it feels almost like there's a gradient or like a light source on one side. Now I'm sitting here talking about the color being true when really we don't, the color could be different if I just went straight for the Rit dye to dye this superwash wool nylon blend. And that's because I used this dye bath with some cotton fabric first. I dyed a t-shirt. And so it's possible, because it does seem like this is a color that breaks, it's possible that there are some colors that were in the kettle that absorbed a little bit faster than others. And so the hue could be different now versus if I set up a dye bath with the same amount of dye. I hope that makes sense. But actually, because I was looking at this over the side, the color in the t-shirt is both more muted, granted I didn't tie-dye it, but it isn't as saturated. And this just goes to show that it's a lot easier to dye wool than it is to dye cotton. Uh, all I did between the two was add vinegar to dye the wool yarn, and we got something a lot darker. Whereas with the t-shirt, we could have achieved something darker, but I also didn't want it to get too dark, so I eventually removed it from the dye bath. But I don't think the color ever would have exhausted and using all the color on the yarn completely on the t-shirt. But anyway, it's fun to leave no dye behind and to use leftover dyes on another project, whether uh, whatever it is that you were dyeing whether it's acid dyes, food coloring, or rip dye or tie dye, it's fun to use it up. The yarn is so pretty. 
And I suppose it's worth talking about, I bring this up from time to time, but when I say don't leave dye behind, just grab another skein and create something beautiful, I know that that might not be possible for everyone because I know that I am lucky enough to do this as both a hobby and my job, and so therefore I have a lot of bare yarn that I do pay for myself, but I have a lot of bare yarn at my disposal, and I have a shop filled with one-of-a-kind colorways where I can list the yarn after to then recoup some of the cost of materials. And so because of that, it is so easy for me to just grab another skein of yarn to soak up that color. And I wasn't in this position when I started on YouTube, where I would use one skein of yarn, divide it into three gram, five gram, I wouldn't even weigh them, to be honest, mini skeins, and then use those for my videos. Because I was trying to stretch the $6 skein of yarn into as many videos as possible to keep my costs down. Of course, it was around this time that if I was hand painting roving or something with food coloring and I didn't use up all the color I mixed, I saved that food coloring also because of a cost thing. I didn't want to waste the extra dye, that excess material, and I figured, okay, I can use this on another project. And so that is a huge part where the leave no dye behind philosophy came from for me. And so I don't want you to ever feel guilty if you have to throw something away or if you don't have an extra skein to leave no dye behind. My goal with these videos is to show a few things. One, that you can have a leftover dye bath and still create something beautiful with what was left behind. Two, a lot of times these videos end up having a more organic process versus a more planned type of colorway and so it's fun to see artistically what I end up end up creating. And I suppose three, I mean everyone has their own techniques that they love and things they enjoy playing with and so as you start your own yarn dyeing journey you'll find what works best for you and that's honestly the best thing that can happen. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and there is a very loud lawnmower outside my house right now. <laughs> Please forgive me if that's the, the camera's picking up a lot of that. But I love to share my dyeing adventures here on YouTube. So please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. And if you want to help support the content here, well, engaging on YouTube is the biggest thing you can do, but you can go and check out uh, the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop to bring home some of the yarn that I've dyed. This helps me buy more yarn to dye and helps make space <laughs> for me to buy more supplies uh, and is a wonderful way that you can help support content here. Plus you get to watch me dye the yarn all over again if you want uh, while you're turning it into something else. And I think that that's unique and fun. Thank you so much for watching.